abbiamo in linea ora Claudia Callisto, tra l'altro ha uno spettacolo che verrà presentato nel Fringe di quest'anno. Non è la prima volta, però parliamo un po' del, di questo spettacolo e di, un po del background di Claudia. So, uh, Claudia, grazie per essere venuto su Radio Italia 1 Adelaide and uh, welcome, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for inviting me on the radio. I came so, last year to talk about my other show, so it's good to come back again this year. Uh, you said another show. Okay, well, let's talk about the other show and then what, what you're presenting in the Fringe. Yeah. So how, how have these things come about? Okay, so four years ago I wrote a book called The Good Italian Girl, a self-published book, which is about my journey growing up in Adelaide uh, as a daughter of immigrant parents. And so that's really where it started. And it actually started after my dad passed away. Um, he passed away suddenly and uh, he was get, he was ageing, he was over 80, but he passed away suddenly from the heart attack. And I remember not being able to say goodbye to him and it caused a lot of uh, concern and we had lots of arguments, my dad and I, because he would always tell me off about going out and, you know, uh, he always wanted me to uh, follow the rules and all this sort of stuff. So I kept, I was very reflective on that. And I published um, my story about IVF initially. And then my publisher and I were having discussion about what other things I was writing about. And I was writing about the unwritten cultural rules. Now, she's not Italian, she's English. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, you know, we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that. It's very traditional. And she didn't understand at any at all how I grew up in Adelaide. And then I threw in the word, I was a Juza. And she's mm -hmm. like, well, what does that actually mean? And I'm like, well, it's a good Italian girl brought up by Italian uh, strict parents, but we're in the 80s, so we looked a bit like Madonna and we would go out to Italian clubs and we would go out to discos and we would try and maximise our time out because, you know, we were in a protective environment, you know. Our parents didn't see it useful for us to go out partying. They liked us staying home. So um, she said, I don't understand anything you've spoken about. And so mm -hmm. I said, I might write a story about it. And that's really where it started. You know, I'm in accounting. I'm not, you know, a, a person that writes, but I do a lot of journaling and the reflection of my journal is for part of the book. So then I published my book and a lot of people my age were saying, oh, we really love your book. You know, we've flipped through it, but I would really like to hear those stories verbally. So I thought of doing one show for Fringe as a new artist and that was three years ago. And I started off that way with one show. It was sold out. 150 people came to support me. And they all had a great time. I learned something new about performing and that I had an ability to story tell and to get across my point in terms of how I experienced life, people connected with me, and I sort of had this sort of instant audience. And... Uh, then something tragic happened to me the following year. My my husband suddenly passed away with a heart attack yeah. after being married for about 25 years. And he's, he supported me greatly through the show and the book. And so I then decided through trying to get over that second hurdle in my life to put together a show about um, the Italian battlefields between the new generation and the old generation and how at the end of the day, it's all about love. You know, our parents loved us immensely. They parented the best way they possibly could, even though it was very strict. And I came from a family of four girls. So you could just imagine <laughs> no brothers to help me out of the house. Um, my dad expected people to knock on the door and ask us to get married, you know. And I'd be like, Dad, we have to be out and about to meet people to get married, you know. And uh, then the next generation, which is my son, who, you know, has an easier life, I let him go out and he can do whatever he wants and how the two generations don't really understand each other and how uh, it's all in love in the end, grey. So I wrote a story about that and I incorporated the death of my husband in last year's Fringe about finding out that at the end of the day, you know, family is what's important, our traditions are important and loving the people we love around us and supporting each other um, 
even through the battles. You know, in the end, it was like a it was a play on words. Um, so that was actually going to be my last year. So this year, I had so much feedback from people saying, "I'm coming to your next show. What are you doing next?" So I decided to do a show about celebrating the women of our generation. Now we don't. We're very humble women and we don't actually put a lot of pats on the back for our, our hard work, our family focus, our culture, the way we we uh, represent our culture for our generation. So I wanted to celebrate how we are as, as women and the bonds. Now, that also incorporating what happened to me when I was going through grief, it was my sisterhood it was my sisters my friends that all rallied around me you know I fell into a million pieces and they're the ones that texted me supported me and helped me through you know a year and a half later they're still in my life helping me and that's what the sisterhood being Italian is all about it's about the unbreakable bonds that we have that we've generated since we were young and these women who want nothing to see you smile and be happy with they they support you in hard times and they support you in good times and that's what the show's about. It's about these unbreakable bonds, how we are awesome as a first generation daughters, how we are so hardworking and we need to be celebrating that. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Okay. And so where and when is the show? Being put on? So my first one's on the twenty third of February. It's a Friday night at Prospect Fringe, um, at Prospect Town Hall. The okay. second one's the 26th of February at Prospect Town Hall as well, and there's lot, there's about 50 tickets left for that one. And then my last show's at the Fulan Fulan place. Um, Fulan Fulan. Fulan, Fulan uh, so. Yeah, yes, sorry. Um, on the Fulan. 9th of Sep- uh, yeah, on the 9th of March, and that's a Saturday night, and that's more of a sit down pre dinner. Uh, it's downstairs. I've got a DJ that's playing a bit longer, so it's a bit more come and eat. Come and see my show. Come and drink and relax, and you know, have fun. And then there's uh, a lot of couples coming. My family's coming to that one. Yep. So they're three different events, but they've all. It's all about celebrating who we are. Yeah, the Fogelaf Line is a good venue for that. So yeah. that's on. You said the fourth of March. Ninth yep. of March. Ninth of March. Ninth of March on a Saturday, and on it at the twenty third of February. Prospect Town Hall, 23rd of February and 26th. And 25th of February. Oh. So okay. the Friday and the Sunday. Friday and the Sunday, 23rd and 25th. Um, and everything's said, on the Fringe on Everything's the fringe. on the fringe website because you have to book through Fringe as part of yep. the agreement that all the bookings have to go through Fringe. They, you know, they allocate the tickets through email or whatever. And it's, it's a good system for artists. That everything goes in sort of one spot. And, and what do we search for if we're looking for the show on the uh, website? You can search for my name, Claudia Callisto, or you can search under Celebrating the Italian Sisterhood. Celebrating the Italian Sisterhood, Claudia Callisto. Okay, cool. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you already started to talk a bit about your Italian background. I was going to ask you, what is your Italianness? Um, you were, were you born here? Um, you said first yes. generation, yeah. So where, where's yes. the family from, and why so, aren't you speaking uh, Italian? Oh, <laughs> so my mum and dad, dad came from Abruzzo, from uh, Rapino, which is Provincia di Chieti, okay. and mum came from Naples in Carsetta. And my mum's family moved to Belgium when she was about eight, so oh. she grew up in uh, Belgium learning French and schooling in French, uh, but learn, uh, speaking Italian in the family. And then my dad moved to Belgium when he was 20 because my dad was a specialist potter from Abruzzo okay. and he went to work in Belgium. So then he actually went to work with my mum's brother and mm-hmm. they then did a bit of a, like, oh, I've got a sister for you, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, they fell in love and then they had two daughters in Belgium and they were living in an apartment in central Brussels. And it was very cold, and my mum had an uncle here at Woodville Park, uh, Kilkenny, uh, in Adelaide. And so she applied through the Belgium government to be sponsored over with two young children. So they flew on a Qantas jet, a bit okay. like the 
British pound pom, uh, two suitcases, two kids on their laps to um, Australia on New Year's Eve, landed in my uh, Adelaide and my uncle's house and they had a big New Year's Eve party with the, their new sponsored, you know, niece uh, and nephews. So the year later they bought a house in Kilkenny and I was born Claudia and I was the first daughter born in Adelaide and first Australian daughter, but I was their third daughter. And then they had uh, another daughter, Celeste, a bit, uh, four, down, four years down the track. So it was four girls. And I grew up speaking French when I was a kid uh, oh. because mum would speak to me in French. And then uh, sort of French and Italian in the house. And then once we went to school, it was English. And we did Saturday morning French classes. And Friday nights we sang in the junior choir uh, with in an Italian junior choir where we went around and performed at the various feasts okay. uh, in Australia in our uh, Italian uh, costume, my sisters and I. And so very young I was singing Italian before I was talking fluently Italian. And then obviously at school, because mum and dad, uh, mum so much spoke English as well because she learnt English, we had this sort of three-way language happening in our place. So we yeah. could speak French, Italian and English, but quite often it was in the same sentence. Yes. So we had a very unique uh, upbringing in that we were influenced by a couple of cultures at the same time. But essentially growing up Italian style at home, Italian food, uh, Italian rules, Italian culture, and Italian values. So, yes, and, and it goes to show that children can learn languages easily and readily. And that's cool. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And so, what you've um, again? Why aren't you speaking Italian now? Because I, my French is actually stronger than my Italian. Okay. Maybe because that was like my very first language, um, and. Uh, my sisters are better than me in Italian, so I think I'm I'm a little bit uh, shyer in terms yes. of trying to express myself in Italian. And I, at the end of the day, I I I'm a storyteller. Um, I speak about my Italian culture, but I'm not overly confident about expressing the same words in Italian. And that's probably something that I need to work on because I find that when I speak to people in Italian, I can understand them very well. Yes. Um, and it's just responding that, you know, I'm a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult for me. Yeah. So, you, you, and, and that that's not uncommon. It, you can recognise the higher level concepts when people are telling you, but maybe not yeah, knowing yeah. The, the words to express them. Um, that's cool. But I've seen you've been travelling. Have you been to Italy? Yes. So recently? we got invited over for a wedding for a good friend of my husband's mm -hmm. in um, uh, this year. So we went for the wedding in Italy, and we travelled to Rome um, and uh, we did Switzerland, we did a bit of Belgium as well and, uh, and other parts of Italy. And I did find it hard speaking. I didn't find it hard understanding everyone in Italian. I yep. just found it hard responding more than a basic level. So I came back with a determination of actually studying a bit more Italian in Australia and possibly Monday I would love to study in Italy, yeah. I have decided. Okay, that's cool. Well, you can take your show over there and, and they won't understand what yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Like you're, you're I mean, they're completely different in Italy growing up than, than what we are here. Even when we went over as kids, we recognised that our cousins at the same age of us when we went over with our parents, their lifestyle was very different from our lifestyle in, in Italy and they were even a lot freer in the paese than they we were in Adelaide. <laughs> um, and my dad, you know, we would come back and say to him, you know, they do more than what we do here in Adelaide. And he's like, no, no, I like it the way we are here in Adelaide, you know, the strictness of it all. Um, so... Yeah, we are different people in Adelaide, and that's what I try and talk about our generation, our journey. We we had a lot of adversity because our parents came over with their old cultures and we were trying to adapt with the new Australian culture and we were sort of caught in the middle. Now, no other generation will experience that and no other, no other generation understands the adversity that we experience, especially as women, and how we became resilient through all that and uh that's to be celebrated i think 
And yeah. uh, that's also in my show. We need to recognise how what our journey was all about, really, and that historically this will never happen again, our generation, and historically we should be recording and talking about our journey. We talk a lot about our immigrant parents' journey, but we don't talk about the first generation, daughters and men. Now, because I didn't grow up with a brother and I didn't have a lot of male cousins either, I don't understand their perspective. My my husband was a first generation son. Now his life, you know, there was difficulty in his life as well and his the expectations that he faced as well. I don't talk about that perspective because, you know, I don't understand it from my perspective. So I really focus on the women, the sisterhoods, because I had three sisters, and what we experienced in our generation. Okay, very, very interesting. So we we'll have to try to find out. Now, you said the Fo the Fogolod Footland, one of them has 50 tickets left. Does that mean the others are sold out? The Fogolod Footland has about uh, 20 tickets left. 20 tickets so left. that's still available as well. And we're downstairs there in the, next to the bar area. Yes. And yes. it's very um it's very eighties looking, the, the club. So it will fit right in, you know, mm -hmm. it's very rustic. So um I'm looking forward to that being my last show at the club. Um, because I think it would have a nice atmosphere as well. It's good, good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Claude. You've had come on to Radio Italia on the related to talk about this uh, the show that uh, is appearing in the fringe. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me.